So why do I prefer in most installations to go with flex duct instead of rigid duct? Let's find out today on Smith House. Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. Make sure you go check out mtcopeland.com for all kinds of training about how to build better. We're presenting long form classes that really get into the details of construction, which will help take somebody from apprentice who knows nothing about the trades through journeyman all the way through mastery of the subject. In today's episode, we are talking about flex duct and why I prefer it in most installations to rigid. First, there's a lot of guys in the building science community who will always say, use rigid, use rigid, use rigid. And if you know anything about me and the way that I build, I usually go to the best. If there's a good, better, and best option, I usually go to the best especially if the more money that you spend, the more performance that you gain. However, with all things, it doesn't matter what we're talking about, with all things, there is a point of diminishing returns where you spend much more money to get very little, if anything, back. You know, let's look at cars. If you want to go fast around a track, there's a number of cars that will take you very quickly around a track for 100K and below. There are cars that cost millions of dollars that will take you around the track slightly quicker, but they won't take you 10 times faster, even though they cost 10 times more. Right, makes sense? Same thing with building science practices. There is good, better, and best, and then there's just, just we like to do this because it's way far out there, but really, if you install this at the same level, you get the same performance, but you don't get the cool panache. In my opinion, that is what's happening with flex duct versus rigid. This is a flex duct. You have this outside sheathing that is a foil and fiber casing that holds in the insulation. This is an R8 insulation. And this is the duct on the inside, this is a polymer duct with a wire wrapped around it. So it's very tough, very durable, and it's very hard to collapse, very hard to collapse. I mean, you try it, go get you some flex duct and play with it. Here's what people see that freaks them out. They see this whole tube and then it's laid over something like that. And they say, look at how much that has kinked. That's a huge kink, look at that. This is, this is like a 14 inch, 16 inch tube and you've kinked it over to being only eight inches wide. That's fine. This is an eight inch duct. It's not a 15 inch duct. The duct is not being collapsed in there. Now you can, you can collapse it. If you see this in your attic, that's a bad thing. And I've seen it. I've seen this in attics. But most of the time, it's a elbow like this and you can feel it in there there is no kinking of the interior duct in there, and there's very little, very little restriction on the flow of air. Because of the way that fluids move through a tube, most of the restriction is happening on the outside anyway, and no matter whether you have a completely smooth or a really rough surface, it really doesn't change as how much media is flowing through, how much fluid is flowing through the center of it. So even though the outside of this is crinkly, where rigid is solid, you're not gonna see that much difference in between them, especially if you install it right and you keep your runs short. Um, in this house, my longest run is 40 feet from this side of the room up over the roof and back down. So I just don't have to worry about the efficiency of the duct, rigid versus flex. Anytime that you read an article that talks about the woes of flex duct, they show two things. One, they show a picture of a spaghetti monster up in an attic where there is just duct work going everywhere. It looks incredibly chaotic. You see a bunch of tie-ups like what you have here that are really cinched down around the insulation and they're like, oh, you're choking the airflow off. And then two, they're gonna show you a study done by Texas A&M, which is about 50 miles from me to the north 
great school up in College Station, um, they did a study that talked about how much velocity, airflow velocity, you lose when you do different things like choke it down, turn it around radiuses, corners, blah, blah, blah. You run it very long lengths. And they said, this is what happens when you do that. And then a lot of people have extrapolated that and they say, you will get bad performance with flex duct because it's always installed poorly. And when you install it poorly, this is the results that you get as demonstrated by Texas A&M. Therefore, we will only use rigid duct. However, in my opinion, you can poorly install rigid duct as well. And a lot of times you're gonna spend a lot more money putting in rigid because you can't do things like we've done here where we have a nice easy sweep elbow that my AC installers were able to just do a nice bend across there. This has zero leakage because it's all one tube. I can't do that with rigid. I have to do a joint, two joints, and then I have to mastic around them. If you ever go look at any AC installer installing rigid, unless they're doing it for the gram, you are going to find places where they can't get all the way around with their mastic. So they have leakage. Nobody ever talks about the leakage. Everybody's always talking about velocities. The second thing is, if you install flex duct correctly, and you look at the Texas A&M flow chart, when you install it correctly, it's fine. There's not one manufacturer that makes AC equipment that does not recommend flex duct or it recommends rigid over flex. Not one, Train, Mitsubishi, uh, John Goodman, if you wanna go cheap, none of them. Everybody knows that flex duct is fine. And then finally, the proof is in the pudding. If flex duct is so bad, you're gonna have one of two things. One, you're gonna have occupants who are uncomfortable in their home because they don't have even distribution of their AC and that happens, guaranteed, but it happens with flex duct and rigid. And the reason it happens is because nobody comes back in and commissions their system. People might design the system, they might not. If they're using flex duct and they're spec built, probably not designed, they just throw it up. Bad install, not flex duct's fault, it's the installer's fault. But then they leave, electri electricity comes on on the house, they turn on the systems and that's it. That's it. There's nobody checking to make sure that the flow of air coming out of each one of the ducts is what is supposed to be there. And they don't know what's supposed to be there because they didn't design it. So a well thought out HVAC system should be designed on the front end with specific requirements. And then on the back end, those specific requirements should be checked to make sure that everything aligns. If you're not doing that, I don't care whether you're doing rigid, flex duct, or just using your attic as a big return and having PVC pipe ran everywhere. It doesn't matter because you don't know what you've got. You're guessing. You have to design it from the front end saying this is what we want and then you have to check it at the back end and then you have to adjust it to make sure that what's happening on the back end is what you said should happen on the front end. So either customers are going to complain because they're not comfortable and that has nothing to do with flex duct or rigid and then secondly the second thing that could go wrong is that you're burning out equipment because when we choke down the equipment by doing all this flex duct garbage, it's just gonna burn out fans because it's having to work so hard that it's just burning itself out and it's shorting, shortening its life. That's not happening, that's just not happening. Now the third thing that energy geeks will say, well, you forget that you're making your equipment work harder if you're making it push harder through the tubes. True. But if you install flex duct well, one, the difference between flex and rigid isn't that great of a difference. And then number two, if it's installed well, even if there's a slight difference, you're talking about pennies over years. I mean, you're not talking about consuming that much more energy, especially if you say dollar for dollar, I'm gonna spend, instead of spending all the money on labor install costs to get rigid duct put up here, I'm gonna take that dollars and I'm gonna move it over to higher performance, more efficient equipment. And I don't have the numbers, I haven't done all the math on this, but I wouldn't be surprised if by taking your dollars away from rigid duct, making sure that you're getting installers who are putting in flex duct properly, and then buying higher efficiency equipment, that you're going to have less energy usage than if you had to go with a lower system just to get in the rigid duct. The last thing that I wanna talk about is 
Another advantage of this, if you are using a ventilated attic system, here we're putting everything in conditioned space, so I don't really have to worry about heat gain and duct work, rigid duct would work fine. However, this is an R8 duct, so that means that I have insulation that is keeping the cold air on the inside here in the south, it's mostly cold air, the cold air cold and the hot air on the outside away from it. I don't have to worry about condensation, I don't have to worry about heat losses, it's all a lot better in an insulated um, casing like what you have with a flex duct. You can obviously insulate rigid as well. Again, it's just a lot more time and a lot more money. Thanks so much for watching. I am literally on my soapbox here. That's how I'm able to touch all of this. Comment below, am I crazy? Do you vehemently disagree with me? Have you been watching all of the very smart people who I have learned a ton from but I disagree with on this one area. Do you agree with them that rigid or die, or do you agree with me that for cost, for performance, and for noise, don't forget when you put a rigid pipe in between a air handler that is vibrating all the way to your grill, you're gonna have a lot of sound transmission through there. You don't get that with flex duct. Or you like me where you like flex duct better. Comment below, let me know. Make sure you go check out mt.copeland on Instagram, Smith House Co. at Instagram, or at Smith House Co. on Instagram, and at Jordan Smith Builds on Instagram. And we'll see you next time on Smith House. <music>